Hi guys, here I am back with another video for you today and I'm going to talk to you about 12 latest fragrances that I'm enjoying a lot lately. All of these are 2022 launches. One of them I think is a 2021 launch. It's just making its way here to the States and you know getting out in retail uh, establishments and things like that. But all great new releases. If you want to find out what they are, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yesterday I'm talking about some new offerings, new fragrances that I'm really enjoying. Some of the fragrances I've spoken about before, maybe here and there, some I've reviewed, some I've just mentioned, and there are some uh, fragrances here that I haven't spoken about, but really great offerings that I'm enjoying. Fragrances that go in different directions. Some might be appropriate for summer, some uh, more winter wear, but you know, there are no rules with fragrances. If you like what you smell, just wear it wherever you, want, you like as long as you can, you know, tolerate it if it's really strong and things like that. But really wonderful offerings. Uh, I'll let you know what they are before I do though. If this is your first time tuning into the channel and you haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. Uh, before I move on with the list of fragrances, is there a brand new fragrance that you're really enjoying a lot lately? Please put a uh, comment down so I can find out what it is. Um, there's no ranking here. It's just a, you know, a list of uh, 12 fragrances. We're going to start out with uh, the first one from the house of Liquids Imaginaires. It's Blanche Bette, this one right here. This is a very underhyped brand and they do have some really, really great offerings. And this one really smells so yummy. Really, really great. It's a milky gourmand is what I should say. Definitely has the sweet milkiness. And for me, it's also very musky and white floral. And it's almost like rice pudding. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but more like toasted rice pudding. So there's this milky custard like quality, but rather than using boiled rice, it's like a toasted kind of, um, almost like toasted rice tea in, in addition to the milk in here but so so delicious I'm, I'm so uh, you know uh, wowed by how great it smells and if you like lactonic milky fragrances you're really going to really enjoy this one it has notes of musk mallow which is ambrette along with milk jasmine tuberose mahonial incense tonka beans cocoa musk and vanilla so it is absolutely a really gorgeous fragrance I think this is going to be very very fall autumn appropriate I just it just screams kind of like very cozy, warm, kind of uh, lightly spicy, musky kind of uh, an offering when it's finally kind of getting cold outside and you would pull for something like this. Absolutely love it. It's Blanche Bet from the House of Liquids Imaginaires. Uh, find out more about it. I'll be talking about that one, you know, moving forward or going forward in the coming uh, days and weeks and months. So stay tuned. But uh, if you like milky lactonic fragrances, definitely go check that one out and smell it. Next fragrance is from the house of Comme des Garçons. It's Zero, this one right here. So this is a brand new offering and it's a very exciting fragrance for me because they throw in a varnish accord according to the notes. This is created by Fanny Bal. And I'm actually really liking this one. I was disappointed with her last offering for Maison Margiela. In fact, the last two fragrances for Maison Mar Margiela for me were disappointments. One of them was the Rain one and then the other one was uh, Autumn Vibes. Didn't care for either of those two fragrances. So I feel like that brand is slipping, especially they did discontinued a lot of fragrances. But here with Comme des Garçons Zero, I really like this kind of a musky, woody experience, but there's something watery in here, like wet wood kind of an experience. I'm not sure where that's coming from, but I think it could be just the fact that there's a lot of bergamot in here and uh, this uh, kind of like synthetic rose oxide note in here along with a musk and lots of other wood. So notes say they are cedarwood, bergamot, musk, Haitian vetiver, synthetic rose, rose oxide, varnish accord. Great scent. I really like it. It's kind of minimalistic. It's definitely in line with Comme des Garçons fragrances. Definitely one uh, that uh, you should check out if you like woody fragrances that are, um, 
I don't know how to say this, but not minimalistic, but it is kind of minimalistic. It's also musky. It's not as minimalistic as something like Eccentric Molecules Molecule 1 because it has more depth to it, but it's still not a really beefy fragrance, if that makes sense. So Zero from Comme des Garçons is a great smelling fragrance. I'm just speaking about it for the first time here today. The first two fragrances uh, I have not spoke, spoken about on the channel yet. The next two fragrances I have spoken about on the channel quite a bit. Within the last, last two weeks, I've been featuring them here and there. First one is Lumari's Porthole, this one right here. Are you guys familiar with this house yet? Uh, I have a, you know, video one video on the channel of the fragrances from this house and I feature some of their other fragrances in various videos throughout the channel. But this is their latest offering and it's the perfect summer fragrance. It's pineapple and also fruitiness like passion fruit and there's loads of bergamot in this as well but there's a salt that's thrown in that kind of cuts through that sweetness of the the fruits and it makes for kind of um, maybe lightly marine you know you're picking up the saltiness from the air kind of a thing uh, it's a great smelling fragrance and also I, I wore this throughout uh, my trip in uh, Europe last a month in uh, June is what I should say and I loved it in the heat in the heat it's just really really great and I actually kept spraying it in my hair and wherever I'd walk around, I'd be smelling this stuff. It smells really, really great. So it's a pineapple fragrance, but as I said, it's kind of salty. So it's pineapple, bergamot, salt, ginger, passion fruit, white flowers, caramel, white musk, and woods. It eventually kind of sweetens up with that caramel note and it becomes woody, musky in the base, but it's all very fruity, salty up top. So porthole from the house of Lumari, such a wonderful fragrance. This next one's also a fragrance I've been uh, speaking quite a bit about. It's Cartusia's Amare, and I think this is the one that launched last year, but it's just making its way here in the States here. And both of these were also featured in my Salty Fragrances video. If you haven't caught that, definitely go. And Amare is a delicious marine fragrance with salt once again, but it's the kind of marine fragrance that's totally tolerable that I really love wearing. It's also kind of watery. I wouldn't say it's ozonic, just has this kind of a watery quality throughout it. Definitely ar aromatic. There's aromatics and herbs in here as well. And then eventually musky, woody, and the dry down a bit earthy, but it features watery notes, salt, mint, rosemary, bergamot, cedar, guyac wood, musk, and patchouli. Very delicious. With a most gorgeous bottle as you can see. I really love this bottle. Uh, they did a great job with this bottle. It displays beautifully. Anyway, that is Cartusia's Amare. The next fragrance I'm talking about is a fragrance I reviewed just as I was leaving uh, the country uh, back in uh, the beginning of June, like June 1st. Uh, it's uh, Goldfield & Banks' Purple Suede. A great smelling leather that kind of is in that ballpark of Tuscan leather like leathers, but this is with an overdose of aromatics like lavender. There's lots of lavender here, so there's definitely kind of an experience of herb markets in the south of France experience is what I was saying in my review. There's definitely loads of leather here. There's wood leather, there's lavender, cardamom, raspberry, amber extreme, pink pepper, and patchouli. There's a little fruitiness here, definitely here and it's prominent. And also um, there's the cardamom. There's definitely a very cardamom experience. But for me, it's the combination of leather, and lavender together and the combination really does work ll leather lavender together is really really great and the lavender as i was saying I've, I've walked around in markets in the south of france plenty and you can smell lots of herbs in the air you know lots of like not only lavender but like herbs of provence so it kind of gave me that kind of an experience when i was wearing this one really delicious it's goldfield and banks purple suede at number five this next one is also another fragrance i wore quite a bit of while i was on my travels in europe this is the latest fragrance from the house of mark Antoine Barois. It's Ensalade. If you haven't caught my review for this, go catch it. I reviewed it and also had a video of uh, Marc Antoine Barois in the video as well, who I got to meet and go to uh, his uh, small perfume shop, very cute little perfume shop in an arcade in Paris. But this is uh, not necessarily anything like Ganymede. It's more uh, masculine. It definitely has a very masculine quality to it and also a leatheriness that they don't credit a leather note in here. But for me, I pick up this leather note in here as well. There's definitely a rhubarb quality and it has loads of vetiver along with rhubarb. There's sandalwood, tonka beans, and cedar. But definitely when I'm wearing it, there's an animalic quality that appears with this kind of leatheriness. I 
think it's definitely leaning masculine, but you know, it's a unisex offering, uh, whereas Ganymede totally was unisex for me here. We've gone to the, uh, you know, masculine side for fragrances, but I think that rhubarb in here adds this kind of like light vegetal fruitiness uh, that contrasts beautifully with all the masculine notes in this particular fragrance. A great scent. Once again, I was wearing this quite a bit and I actually received compliments with this one as well. They People were saying it smelled great on me. So, Marc Antoine Barois Ensalade at number six. This next one's brand spanking new. I haven't spoken about it, and I'm really, really impressed with the quality of this one. This is from the house of Nila Fardunil. This is Tanis Tabak. Are you guys familiar with this house? Um, I do have some, uh, no, I have a video on the channel of this house, and I've featured various fragrances here and there on the channel. Um, with a, a couple of their fragrances. Uh, in fact, the, over the weekend I discussed uh, their bergamot in a bergamot fragrances video, but this one is a definitely a gorgeous take on tobacco. Definitely not burned and ashy kind of tobacco with an overdose of white flowers. So if you like the idea of flowers, beautiful, really, really beautiful flowers here, lots of them, and contrast it with the tobacco blossom and also this leafiness, because there's definitely kind of a leafy uh, tobacco quality in here, uh, whereas it doesn't go ashy like like if you're talking about ashy tobacco, something like tobacco vanille, which is contrasted with uh, the vanilla. It's ashy tobacco and vanilla. Here, it's just a fresh blossom of the tobacco flower, the tobacco blossom, along with the leaves before they're kind of like burned kind of a thing. Lots of tobacco blossom with incense, Egyptian jasmine, Casablanca lily, tobacco leaf, tuberose, sandalwood. Gorgeous fragrance. It smells great on me. I really, really love it. It does lean feminine for sure, but it's delicious. Nila Fardunil Tanis Tabak. Great smelling fragrance. This next one's from the house of Olfactive Studio. It's Dancing Light, this one right here. So Dancing Light is definitely, you know, when I was first wearing it, it was a little more aromatic and green, but now it's kind of I'm starting to, you know, get familiarized with this particular fragrance and it's kind of definitely developing and coming through further. But there's definitely lots of aromatics, lots of them. There's a mint note in here, the Siberian pine, there's Moroccan neroli, Indian sandalwood, there's musks, freesia, and lavender, or lavendin is what they call this. Yeah, so there's definitely an aromatic presence and then a woody, musky presence as well, but lots of icy cold flowers. And this makes for a great wear in the heat of the summer because it's fresh, it's invigorating, it's very, very floral. So there's the, the aromatic touches that contrast with the flowers. And then, of course, the, 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 the little bit of musks that's thrown in wears beautifully. So it's Olfactive Studio Dancing Light. Uh, check that fragrance out if you haven't yet. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that brand, Olfactive Studio. Uh, they do have some great fragrances that are definitely worth noting. All right, another fragrance that I've spoken a little bit about in a few videos here and there on the channel is Hiram Green's latest fragrance, Arcadia. If you guys don't know Hiram Green, he is a all-natural perfumer. And this is actually, I have to be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of all natural perfumery because they don't last but his fragrances definitely do last and he's got some really really amazing fragrances that's why I don't talk a lot about all natural perfumery but he's done a great great job here with Arcadia it's a fougere barbershop fragrance with loads and loads of lavender along with tonka beans there's bergamot spices patchouli jasmine there's resins rose and sandalwood so eventually it does become woody and there's the presence of resin so it becomes a little ambery in the dry down but it's lots of lavender you've got to love lavender to appreciate shape barbershop fougere fragrances. If you don't know anything about fougere fragrances, I have lots of videos on the channel. It's one of my favorite styles because as I was growing up, my dad used to wear a lot of them and I got familiar with the, the, the style of fragrances and the fact that I really love lavender. Lavender is definitely one of my favorite herbs. And here, uh, Hiram Green has done a great job with Arcadia. I want to explore the house a little further now that I've uh, really been digging this particular fragrance. He does do good, good work on his fragrances. So that's Arcadia from the house of Hiram Green. Moving on to uh, Ducita's latest fragrance, Parfums Ducita Montri. And Montri is definitely a unique take on patchouli. It does have loads of patchouli, but I wouldn't call this a patchouli bomb. You would notice it. There's definitely loads of oud here and roses. I would call this kind of like a sheeper style of fragrance with oud, roses, patchouli, leather, tobacco, saffron, jasmine, orris, oregano, dried fruits, pettigran. There's a lot of stuff going on in here, but for me, it's the oud that stands out. The fragrance is also very, very powerful. 
powdery, the rose stands out, the patchouli stands out as well, and I think the tobacco comes in quite a bit as well. So it, it kind of acts a little masculine, of course, uh, with all these notes that are thrown in here. So I feel like it does lean masculine. This is probably one of her more masculine offerings, but it smells really, really great. I like it because it's reminding me of, there's an overdose of jasmine in here, and it, it reminds me of a powdery jasmine contrast with the oud and roses and a patchouli leather and tobacco. So it's Montre from the House of Parfums du Cita. Uh, next is a, a fragrance that I also discovered while I was in France. It's uh, Guerlain's Neurolia Vetiver. Um, really great a really great combination of notes. It's very, very interesting here where they have neroli, which is the citrus flower. And typically neroli is a, you know, a more feminine leaning note. And they've got it beautifully contrasted with vetiver, which is earthy, woody, definitely more masculine. And I feel like the fragrance now has turned into this very unisex offering. It smells really, really great. So it's very, very citrusy, but citrus floral and earthy, woody and with the vetiver. And then there's also basil here. There's a very aromatic basil note in here. So it kind of adds a little bit of a green herbal quality along with fig accord so it's a light bit of fruitiness this this really really great it's definitely a great offering from this house Nerolia vetiver so it's Guerlain's Nerolia vetiver if you don't know that one do check it out I really recommend that one for a great smelling freshie for the summertime that line is very very fresh the aqua allegoria line but I recently I discussed the forte of mandarin basilique I'm really looking forward to that one. And the last fragrance I'm going to talk to you about is a fragrance from the house of Narciso Rodriguez, uh, a designer. It's Blue Noir Parfum. So interesting, I don't see Narciso Rodriguez fragrances here in the USA at department stores. They're usually at the you know online uh, retailers and discounters. But I was in Italy in a department store in Turin and they had a whole section of Narciso Rodriguez. I guess this brand does better in Europe uh, or maybe not. It's an American brand and I don't even know if the the the, the, the designer Narciso Rodriguez even does clothes anymore because I never see them anywhere. But this Noir Parfum, Blue Noir Parfum is what I should say is absolutely fantastic the way it smells. For me, it's like taking Blue Noir and combining it with Diorum Intense. I wouldn't call this a Dior Homme Parfum. Even though it's pump Parfum concentration, it doesn't have the thickness of Dior Homme Parfum. But for me, it's this combination of this very, very sexy Dior Homme Intense, and then also taking kind of like that vetiver cardamom combo of the original Blue Noir series of fragrances and combining it together. But for me, it starts out smelling like Blue Noir, but in the background, you're smelling that iris, that typical iris that's associated with uh, the Dior Homme Intense line. And then it creeps in and creeps in and takes over and becomes like like Diorum Intense and then it reverses kind of like you have that background of the Blue Noir Parfum here now it's become more like Iris it's so so delicious absolutely delicious I smelled this early on on my trip in June in France and I was like damn I gotta get a bottle of that it smells so good it's really really a great offering but the notes are Iris, Musk, Woods, Tonka Beans, Suede, Leather, Vetiver, Cardamom, Sandalwood, Bergamot very delicious I highly recommend it it's a great designer release um, they didn't appear at any department stores in the States. Do let me know. I don't ever see Narciso Rodriguez fragrances here. I don't know what's going on. And as I said, I did see a whole department at uh, a department store in a tour in Italy. So I guess the Europeans uh, might like this brand a lot more. Anyway, great fragrance. Check it out. And that's the last fragrance I'm talking about today. It's Narciso Rodriguez Blue Noir Parfum. Which fragrances are you guys enjoying a lot lately? Brand new ones. Put a comment down so I can find out. Are you familiar with the ones I discussed today? And do you have them or have you been eyeing them? I would like to know that as well. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.